I'll call this regular council meeting of the Village of Graham and Ann to order at 7.43 p.m. Um, for prayer tonight, we have Deputy Mayor Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather here together tonight. Pray for your wisdom as we discuss the issues before us. Thank you for this wonderful island we are so very blessed to live on. I pray that you just be with us as we go about the business tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, as you can see, we're trying meeting in person again after a couple of meetings on Zoom. We're not sure how this is going to work, but we're going to give this a test run tonight and see how we make out. I think given some of the challenges we all had with internet the last meeting, we thought this would be a bit better option and we'll see how this goes and hopefully we make it through tonight. Um, I don't have much else in the way of opening remarks. The only other thing I did want to mention is we had a really great Santa Claus Christmas parade here last weekend. A huge thanks goes out to all of the organizers and everybody who participated. It really, I think, is one of the best Santa Claus parades around. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here. So with that, I'm going to move on to disclosure of conflict of interest. Hearing none, we'll move on to adoption of the minutes. We have two sets, one from a regular council meeting on November 1st and a number, another from a special meeting on November 22nd, and those were all included in the package. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the minutes from November the 1st, the regular council meeting, and November the 24th, a special meeting. You heard the motion from Councillor Layton. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Greenlaw. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Item number six is additions to the agenda. Hearing none, we'll move on to item number seven, which is the RCMP report. investigations going on. 
I'll just speak quickly to the aggravated assault investigation we had. It required many police resources coming to Grand Manan, including the forensic identification section. There was some issue getting resources to Grand Manan uh, as required because the ferry was full. Now this was right at the tail end of the small ferry to Grand Manan was it five that was being used uh, just before it transitioned over to the bigger boat. Uh, I did look into this some, and I have found out that there, I guess, is a, a memorandum of understanding between emergency services and coastal transportation, and so right now I'm, I'm seeking that out just so that I you know, have all the, the information and have that in hand if, if we are needing that again. With the increase in frauds, uh, most of them are surrounding one individual. Uh, I'm not going to mention the name tonight just because no official charges have been laid yet. Uh, but there are quite a few investigations going on, both on Grand Manan, uh, as well as the mainland surrounding this individual. Uh, I just wanted to put a public warning out or some tips for people in regards to this type of uh, behavior, or this type of offense happening. Just be cautious when being asked to pay up front for services. Uh, you can do some reference checks for other people they've done service for. Um, look up the name of the company and the people online and see if you can see anything on there. You can contact the Better Business Bureau and, and see if there's been any complaints into this company before. Now, those things being said, you can do your due diligence and do those things and it still sometimes uh, ends up with with you being defrauded, um, a typical MO for some of these people, they will come and do a few jobs, or they'll start a few jobs and make it look like they're doing a good job. And then once they've kind of built a bit of a reputation up for themselves, uh, then they start to you know collect that upfront money and then never show up for the service where they only do a little bit. So just be very cautious, especially when being asked to pay upfront for, for things. Off-road vehicles do continue to be a source of a uh, problem for the RCMP here. And it seems to be mostly a few people who continue the behavior repeatedly uh, rather than the majority of people. It's, it's I think, the, the minority of people, but they're just doing it over and over and over again. Um, speeding, careless driving, uh, taking off from us when we try to stop them. I will say that I feel like we've been quite lenient in, uh, in enforcement with off-road vehicles and that. Uh, we tend to try to take the, a softer approach to it, but if <coughs> this continues to be an issue and we feel like the public is getting more and more at risk because of the way people are driving, um, we may need to change the way we approach it. Uh, I have spoken to public safety. They do have an off-road vehicle uh, enforcement section uh, about it and they are willing to come and, and come over to Grand Manan and, and do some work over here if we feel like that's required. So just putting that out there for people to be aware of. And I will provide a bit of an update to uh, the questions into the collisions on the island, where they're happening and if there's anything that we can attribute them to. Our analysts have kind of wrapped up what they were able to do and uh, just have a a little bit of information for you for that. Uh, looking specifically at this year, they had, and this was only up until the end of September that they were looking at, and that's when they wrapped up their, their part of this. There was 22 collisions, 14 of those were on um, Highway 70, 776. In 2020, there was 32 collisions on the island reported, 17 of those were on the, the main highway. And so looking at a percentage, they're looking at about 57% of the reported collisions took place along the main highway here. Uh, they did try to break it down a little bit, narrow it down. They looked at the civic numbers of, of where they were <coughs> happening and they identified three specific areas that had the higher frequency of collisions. The first one is in the area of the independent grocery, grocery store. Uh, the second one, uh, they list out uh, 401, between 401 and 500 of Highway 776, and that's just north of the thrifty store, that stretch. 
And then the third area is right by the uh, Grand Isle Pharmacy in that vicinity. Now, that all being said, <coughs> that only, um, we're only able to track that if the actual specific uh, civic address was mentioned. A lot of times, a collision, if it's, if it's just along a stretch of highway, we just put in there, Highway 776. And so this doesn't necessarily reflect any off-road collisions or ones that are just listed as Highway 776 and not to a specific address. If anybody has any questions for me tonight. Any questions? You, the uh, two of the places that you mentioned, maybe all three <coughs> are, oh, sorry. Two of the three areas that you mentioned and possibly all three of the areas are just heavy traffic areas with the uh, independent Grand Isle and Thrifties. So it's probably not a road condition as much as just inattention and nature, is it? Yeah, I would agree to that. There's, the visibility is good in all three of those areas. It's not like you have trees or bushes up right up to the road in those sections. The only thing that maybe could be looked at would be uh, whether or not it was needed to reduce the speed, like speed or put up signage or anything like that. Um, yeah, as far as the, the actual road condition and that, they're all fairly straight. The Grand Isle has the 90 degree turn right there. Um, but, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do to change that. But Anyone else? I have, I guess, more of a comment maybe than a question, and it was about back to getting the resources here with the ferry. If there are challenges with that, we do have regular meetings with Coastal Transfer this week, Thursday. So just um, if you want to chat about that after, maybe we can have a conversation if there is something we can do from this end. Sure, okay? thank you. All right, thanks. Oh, Councillor Russell. Uh, with respect to, let's say, the uh, independent uh, is that 80 kilometers in front till they get, say, by the church or something? Yeah. Is that, that, how do we go about, is that a council action or is that a RCMP action? I, I think uh, that could be brought up by either myself or by the council. Or both. Or, or both of <laughs> us uh, recommending that. And that would obviously have to go to probably Department of Transportation or something like okay. that. But because we have the same issue out here now with the skateboard park and the church and this building. Mm -hmm. We have some concerns there, so maybe we should add those other areas in with that. Would that be Councillor Lading? I agree. I agree. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd say run before someone else has an idea. <laughs> thank you very that's much. The whole I've had, so. <laughs> thank you. Okay, moving on to new business, which is 14-1, the village logo, Councillor Boyd to address. Oh. oh, sorry, I missed over, there was nothing under business arising, so, okay. Business arising, it's from the previous, uh, was the buoyant alert system? Okay. I think or Chris has a, an update. With respect to the con a contract, maybe. Yeah, uh, the new buoyant system. So uh, we agreed to change from Sentinel over to buoyant. Esme and I have been working with uh, with them on the rollover to to change it. So today there were some documents that came in through email, and one of them is uh, a 14-page terms of service agreement. They, they said that we'd wish to pass this on to our legal department, so I gave this to Councillor Russell. <laughs> and it came back with a lot of yellow sticky things on it. So uh, it basically, Councillor Russell's recommendation is it's a pretty standard contract. There's just a few clerical errors in that that we're going to bring up with them. A lot of just basic wording, some of the terms, like we're missing a fax number, phone numbers, incorrect stuff like that. But uh, but other than that, <clears throat> it's just uh, requiring a signature from either the mayor or the clerk. But uh, I also passed out uh, the, the sheet that says general information. One of the things that they're in the process of doing is rolling out uh, the template specific for Graham and Ann. 
So as you can see, <coughs> there's uh, the general information. You've got risk types, day-to-day uh, -day communication, and relevant locations. So basically, I'm just looking for everyone's input. Uh, we don't need it tonight, but just maybe just look this over, <coughs> take this home with you, and uh, an email back sometime this week. If we're looking at uh, uh, possible January 1 rollout for the new system because uh, the Sentinel expires on December 31st, when I told that to, uh, to Leanna today, there was a long pause. I, I think she was thinking more of a 60-day window would be more comfortable. But anyway, she said this is uh, absolutely possible to do, but we need this information back as soon as possible so they can get this stuff out. So once I get the service agreement signed and back to them, and once we get this information as well, what we want to see, obviously, like in, uh, in risk types or day-to-day -day communication, one of the biggest things that we want to put in there is uh, the ferry system. That's, I mean, obviously that's specific to us, but my question to everyone when they're looking over this, is there anything else on there that's specific to us? So when people are going on, either going on the app or going on the, the desktop site <coughs> that you can sign up for that's uh, just specific for Graham and Ann. Or obviously, probably boil water orders isn't something we're going to need that's going to be relevant. So there's just a bunch of stuff in there that we can either add or take out if we don't need like at most things, if we have an app that's really filled with a lot of irrelevant information, people may not be as apt to use it, but if you open that up and everything there is specifically for Graham and Ann, then it's going to be a lot more user friendly. So just a uh, just little homework, just food for thought. Take that and, uh, and let me know what you think, if there's anything there that we should, uh, that we should add. When do you need the feedback by? I would say by the end of the week at the latest. Any questions? Okay. Thanks, Chris. Um, I will just say, as I was skipping along to 14, um, we did zip right over the 10 minute open session, which obviously, because we don't have guests here, we have no one to speak. If there is, mem if there is a member of the public that has something that they would like to have addressed on the agenda, they can always submit questions to the village office and we can deal with them that way as we try to make our way through this new meeting protocol. So now I'll skip ahead to 14.1, Village Logo, Councillor Boyd. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So um, I sent an email out a while ago uh, kind of discussing um, a few updates on the website upgrade uh, and things like that and we kind of get the conversation rolling about do we want to refresh or renew our current village logo and uh, from the feedback I got from that email it seemed that um, that everybody was up for for a change so I reached out uh, to our current website upgrading company Big Bright Sun and asked if they did any graphic design directly and they referred me to Branch Design in Moncton as well. Uh, I talked to Mr. Branch, uh, just just, just uh, low level stuff, uh, kind of not committing to anything, but asked him to do us up some quotes uh, on a refresh and, uh, and a brand new. So I sent that out to Esme, she put it in the package, so you have it before you. Uh, one thing I'll clear up right away is you see that there's two line items uh, one, the first one for a renew, uh, a refresh, and, a, and the second one for a brand new, and there's two different prices there. Now, on the, on the back side, it has it totaled. Uh, that total shouldn't be there. That was, that was a whoopsie uh, with the quoting software, apparently. So it's, it's either or, it's not both. So um, anyways, it's a pretty detailed report. Um, you can look through it. Basically, f for the first one, for the 1800, uh, he can refresh and renew our current logo, uh, come up with some, some, I guess it says a minimum of three different concepts that he would present to us, uh, see if we liked any of them, and then there's a whole process that follows along with that. Uh, the next one is, is, uh, is double the price at 36, but this is uh, quite a bit more work, uh, and basically coming up with a completely new logo and design. So he would come here, he would get our input, he would get public input, uh, and do some research on, on the island of Graham and Ann itself and come up with at least three, and if you read into the fine print, it could be upwards of five or six 
um, for us to pick out that one. Anyways, this is just the first company I talked to. Uh, I reached out to Councillor Turner because she had some info from their refresh where she works. And she's reached out to a few as well. And I think hopefully maybe we might get get something from one of your contacts as well. So this is this is not an urgent thing. It's just an info thing. Um, I say it's not urgent. We don't want to wait too, too long if we want to uh, go live with the new website in the spring and with our new branding as well to match up. But you can see in both the quotes, the first quote with the refresh, he would have that done the end of this year. And the second quote with the brand new, it would be in January. So it's not, it's not, I mean, I say it's not a lot of work. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to graphic design, but uh, it's not a long timeline. So, um, so we don't have to vote on anything tonight. And like I say, if, if Councillor Turner's com contacts come with a, with a quote as well, then we can, we can compare them as well. And you can go on his, on this website, branchdesign.com, uh, and look at all, he's done some municipality work. He's done all kinds of different things and it's uh, some pretty neat stuff. So that's just, this is just more for information. Um, and if we do decide to go with him, then, then, uh, we can roll at another meeting. So. If you, anybody has any questions at this time, I would answer them. And if not, we can keep rolling. We have a local um, graphic design company on the island. Has, has he been approached or has the opportunity to He He hasn't, participate? no, but we certainly can reach out. Yeah. This is just kind of a get the ball rolling type of situation. And uh, But I certainly can reach out or if you would like to or, or whatever, right? Yeah, yes, I, and, and I can. Yep. Like I said, this is just kind of a get the ball rolling because I, I had no idea what, what costs or what the timeline would be. So so from that, if that be council's desire, like say uh, Councillor Turner is going to have some more info from us, for us from her contact, and then I can reach out to, to the local guy as well. And uh, I've got another couple of calls into some very small firms, but uh, they were interested. I don't know. I don't know what their timeline is. It's kind of a side gig for these other ones, but I can get some, some more price. If we want to gather some more information and reconvene on this at our next meeting, we can do that. Any other questions? I think I might have one, a question. Just, I'm wondering. Or I personally like the idea of a, a, a redo. Any dissenting opinions? Maybe I should ask that before we breeze right along. Okay, hearing none, we will move on to 14.2, which is local governance reform, which I'm going to start off and then I'm going to turn it over to Councillor Boyd. Um, I think everybody probably saw the news earlier in the month with the um, very large white paper on local governance reform. It's a fascinating read if you're really bored some night. Um, we, I think we're fortunate on Graham and Ann in that we, our boundaries were not touched, that we're not looking at amalgamation with any of the local service districts or the mainland or any of those things, which is good. But there are some things that I think are going to end up impacting us as we move on to year two and three and beyond that. And that is the increased scope and responsibility for the Regional Service Commission. They will be taking on more things like economic development, tourism promotion, community development, and regional transportation. Some of those things like economic development and tourism to some degree have really been more of a local driven type of effort versus from a regional perspective. So there's been a lot of discussion about what that's going to look like and how, how Graham and Ann will fit into the process has become my concern and if there will be an opt out. Um, the Regional Service Commission has had a couple of meetings to talk about what that might look like because they're looking at a whole new board. Instead of having 16 members on the board, it will be down to eight with the amalgamation of the other communities. So it's a much smaller group of people with a lar lot larger responsibilities. So I think there's gonna be some changes going forward with how we interact with that group. And it's still a lot of unknowns, but I did just wanna flag it from that perspective anyway that this will be something we'll probably be talking about going forward in the next year or two 
as that all sort of develops. Um, UMNB, I know, has had a series of meetings talking about what the impacts are, and Dan being our local rep, I thought it would be appropriate for him to give an update, so I'm going to ask him to sort of give an update from a more provincial perspective. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, anybody that's even briefly skimmed through the white pages, there's, there's, it's a lot, and there's a lot of change coming. Um, and it is something that, that the citizens have been asking for a long time for, for change in municipal reform. And now they've changed it <laughs> a lot. Uh, and so now, you know, that's, that's of course being met with positive and negative uh, connotations. So at UMMB, um, I can speak for our zone. I met with uh, Brenda Allison and St. George as the other zone four reps. We met with the mayors of the zone four, uh, our mayor included as well as the UMB President Alex Schulten and our Executive Director Dan Murphy. And we had a good chat on how this directly affects our zone. I mean, obviously, uh, again, as Bonnie mentioned, not a lot of changes for us, uh, other than the concerns with the Region Service Commission. But you've got St. Stephen now that's, that's growing exponentially, and because of their growth, they have to have another election in November. Uh, you've got St. George and Black Cyber possibly amalgamating, so they're going to grow really big, and they have to have another election next November. And because of all these new entities um, that will have require new elections, the provincial government decided that we would have a five-year mandate now instead of four. So hope everybody's comfy in their chairs. Um, <laughs> that being said, um, UMMB will be uh, submitting their response to the white pages this week. Uh, I received a copy of the draft letter, and that should be going to Minister Land's office Wednesday or Thursday, and at that point I will distribute it out to all of you to have a, have a look. Uh, Minister Alain and uh, Acting Deputy Minister Donahue have been really, really good, uh, at least in uh, at the association level. Uh, Minister Alain keeps claiming that this is a living document, so nothing set in stone yet. Uh, but as things start to roll out, you know, once, once they roll, that's where it's going to be. So that's why UMB as an association is really pushing all our members to be boisterous in what in, in what you want to see now so if you have any more ideas or concerns or questions or comments pop them to me or i can give you the contact of our president or our ed as well um but that letter will be going in this week to minister alas so that's where we're at from a zone perspective questions or comments I think um, since things may be shifting like economic development wise and things like that, that in the time leading up to that, it's probably good that we sort of get our priorities and everything documented and figure out um, sort of what we see as our way forward so that we're not having to do like a knee jerk reaction, hand it over and then say, but, but, you know. So I think, and I mean, some of that's obviously going to be on me as chair of economic development, but that's fine. But I think, I think it's really important that that we kind of know where we stand and how we want to move forward. Um, you know, there will be good points to this as well because there are a lot of common concerns in the region. So, you know, hearing from other people what they see as a way to to deal with them is good too, like the housing thing, things like that. So there are positives in it, but I do think that we have to kind of um, make sure that we don't lose our identity in this. I think that's been one of the big concerns and one of the things we've topped out mechanism for it, much like there is with the recreation piece of the Regional Service Commission. I mean, we opt out of that for obvious reasons. And there are probably some pieces of this that aren't going to be as applicable to us. And maybe we, there, if there is an opt-out, we can go our own way on economic development, for example, but work collaboratively on regional transportation. So I think that as we go along, those are going to be huge things to tackle. And I agree with Councillor Turner. I think the sooner we get our priorities down, I think the better off we're going to be on those ones in particular. Anyone else? Okay, moving on to another fun topic, the 2022 budget. Um, just as sort of a precursor to this, I like how everybody laughs as soon as we talk about the budget. I don't, which I think is maybe an indicator of how our budget meetings have gone. Um, 
we've had three full budget meetings. They have lasted, the shortest one was an hour and a half. I think we topped out at just over two hours on the first one. They've been very involved in a lot of the discussions, um, but I have to say it was a really good process. I really enjoyed it this year. Um, and I think that some of those discussions, if they're not completely reflected in this budget, I think they will be in budgets going forward because we identified things that, while we may not be able to change this year, that we would like to be able to change over the coming 12 months to be reflected in the next budget. Um, all that to say, I thought we might be ready to approve this tonight, which is why I put it on the budget on the agenda a week ago. But I think we may have it may be prudent to delay this to a special meeting for a couple of weeks to see where we end up on the pool. And I'm going to see if the rec director has any updates for us on that before we go any further. But I think if we can reflect some of those things in this budget it may be worth waiting the two weeks to make sure we're actually reflecting what we think we're going to be doing versus what we the numbers we've drawn out of the air for lack of a better way of saying it at this point so chris i don't know if you have any updates for us on that or if we're on the right track i do but you're going to take away from my very detailed rec report <laughs> Well, I don't want to steal the rec reports thunder, so I guess maybe at this point I'll suggest if we have a motion to table the budget till the next meeting. Is yeah, that? I make that. Motion. Okay. You heard the motion from Council Russell, seconded by Councilor Boyd. Any questions? Didn't you say special meeting? We're a special meeting. We have to do one in a couple of weeks to do our year-end transfers once we see where our surplus is, so we would approve it in two weeks time. Does that make sense? Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried and without stealing any thunder of where we might end up we were actually at this point showing a 0.25 cent decrease in our budget so we'll see where we end up after the pool discussion. So moving on to 14.4 a street light audit. Speaking of things that may impact next year's budget, Councillor Russell. You heard the motion by Councillor Russell. Do we have a seconder? I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Seconded by Deputy Mayor Fitzsimmons. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. And I believe that was your fastest <laughs> agenda item. <laughs> Moving on to 15.1, the Rec Director's Report. <clears throat> and we've had a preview. Pool study, I should have done it right then. So tonight for the rec report, I'm going to kind of break it down into two things. And the rec department now has uh, a, a program department as well as uh, facilities. So as far as programs go, uh, in the council package, we did put a little bit of, uh, actually a lot of information in there about uh, our recreation programmers, job duties, and as well as, uh, Tanisha has done a very good job about kind of tracking everything that she's been doing over the last, let's say six months. And it's safe to say I think she was a little bit discouraged when she first started with some of her programs that she wasn't getting the turnout but uh, like we explained to her this is something that's new it's going to take some time to build as well as 
starting it in July, summer season, families are extremely busy, and a lot of, of families on Grand Manan travel all summer. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> you can see in her report, the, uh, the Excel sheet that she's got printed there, that once, uh, kind of once school got back in and once everyone kind of gets settled in for their regular routine, numbers really started coming up. <clears throat> she has a really good turnout, like in her after school open gym for the two different age groups. Uh, <clears throat> I know she has a really good turnout for her Lego club that she's been doing after school. I mean, you look at the numbers, I mean, averaging anywhere from 11 to 19 kids coming in after school. So there's Lego, they've been displaying some of their creations out here in the hallway. But <clears throat> to me, I think one of the biggest things was, <clears throat> was if you notice under the senior activities, out of uh, six different things that she reached out for seniors to do, as you can see, not one person come out. But if you look at the line below that, <clears throat> what we learned was if they won't come to you, you go to them. So since then, uh, Tanisha has gone to a Rotary Isle, as well as a nursing home. And I believe in the package as well, there's actually a letter that was written by the board of directors from Rotary Isle saying how much they appreciate everything that Tanisha has been doing. And if you look at the numbers, I mean, they've had a really good, great time <coughs> with her banana split, strawberry shortcakes, I think I might go. <laughs> but, uh, so she's doing a really fantastic job. And uh, I think one of the, uh, something that really jumped out to me just lately, uh, some of you may have noticed when you came in, there's a Christmas tree right here in the entryway. And it's got a little, little handmade uh, paper ornaments on it. People from the community uh, Tanisha put it out there. People from the community uh, reached back to her. It's called uh, Santa for a Senior. So what happens is uh, any member of the community or any family member that may not be able to get here because of COVID or any other reason that might have a, an elderly family member at home alone over Christmas, they reached out to us and they gave us you know name, age, gender, and a few items that they would uh, really like for that family member to have. <clears throat> so on that Christmas tree, there's those ornaments. And when you, if some people from the community can come in, grab one of those ornaments, it doesn't have any name on it, but it just has uh, the age and gender and the information that the, the senior would like. So you take that ornament, <clears throat> you go purchase those things, you gift wrap them, bring it back in, and with that ornament, you place that ornament on the, on the gift as if it was the gift tag. So when, uh, when Tanisha goes, she can recognize who gets what, and then we put all the presents under the tree, and then she's gonna go around before Christmas and deliver them all. So I think she said she started out with 28 ornaments on the tree, and I think she's only got 11 left. So <clears throat> that's a great turnout for, for members of the community coming in to, uh, to wanna give back to, uh, to some of the seniors. So, so hats off to her for that. Any questions about the program before I move on to the facilities? Maybe that might be a good way of doing it. Don't you think that the seniors issue may be a difficulty with communication? It could be the communication or I was thinking maybe transportation as well, maybe a combination of the two. Uh, obviously, this day and age, most people use Facebook, but uh, Tanisha did start going around to some of the local businesses like the pharmacy, uh, the Save Easy, different places, and just kind of putting up flyers, thinking that seniors may, obviously they probably won't be on Facebook, some are, some are, but they might see that in uh, some of the places that they're going to visit on a regular basis. But the word still wasn't getting out, so I wonder if it might have been a transportation issue as well. But so when I she- I don't mean that as any shortfall on her part. Yep, no. Nope. <clears throat> It is, it is. So hopefully the more she gets out, like going to Rotor Isle and going to the nursing home, maybe uh, people there, family members, word of mouth may travel more. So when we start offering those programs again, uh, we may get a few more out. But uh, So facilities. Uh, right now the arena, everything's moving along. 
with our regular schedule. Minor hockey makes up about 90% of our ice time right now. Uh, the adult uh, user groups are always slow to get started. Uh, most men and ladies make their, their livelihoods on the water. So everyone's really nervous about coming out to, to play hockey right before the season starts due to injuries. Typically, over the holiday season, once we get into the new year, those groups will pick up. Uh, private rentals has been on the rise, which is great. Uh, usually the two weeks that the kids are out during Christmas break, we get a lot of rentals. And I know uh, the phone's been ringing here and Esme's been writing everything down, so the calendar's starting to get full. So anyone looking for, for ice rentals to get the kids wore out over the Christmas break, uh, feel free to call. The gymnasium has been uh, really busy lately. I think one of the biggest things was was that period of time when we had the QP strike. Obviously, no one was allowed in the school, so all the uh, the school teams were reaching out trying to get some gym time, and we tried to accommodate them the best we could. As well as with uh, with Tanisha, with our new program coordinator, uh, we also require a little extra gym time now ourselves, so she can run those programs. So it's going to be. It's going to be nice to uh, to work with the boys and girls club just kind of moving forward on a on a new gym schedule hopefully that uh, with that <clears throat> everybody can work work together i think a lot of the kids from the after school program at the club has been taking in on tanisha's program which is good to see as well the fitness center uh, there's a huge demand right now for the fitness center, and it seems like since COVID, people are more aware of, of mental health and uh, physical activity on your, in, to help with your mental health. And so one of the things that we've done is we've done some surveys, and I think one of the biggest things on the survey that we did to our users that they were looking for, the big thing was not enough room. We really, as me and Alyssa and I kind of, beat our heads around the wall trying to think of different ways to to help with the space issue in there and one of the things that come up was the was the new mezzanine in the arena the Mars mezzanine it's a big open space <clears throat> you know it's not ideal but it's only used a small percentage of the time so we thought maybe that was a new spot that we could look at so we reached out to Kirk Cheney who was part of the team that was here that built it originally we went through uh, deputy mayor Fitzsimmons was here one day we went through all the plans in the in the stock room and come to find out structurally that part of the building wouldn't be able to maintain the weight from all of the gym equipment so we kind of had to go to, to plan b which we don't have plan b yet but uh, hopefully somewhere along the way we can try to figure out some more ideas for for some more room. The other big thing was the data of used and old equipment. So I think uh, hopefully we can find some grants or some money in the budget to pick up some new equipment for there. And <clears throat> scheduling. Scheduling, uh, as we move forward with COVID, scheduling is becoming an issue, especially as we move through these new I guess they're not phases anymore. We've got you know one, twos, and threes instead of colors. Having that many people in the gym not required to wear masks is is probably going to be an issue. So I think we kind of need to have something in place now, uh, proactively instead of waiting for something we have to react on down the road if if we happen to get into a, a different number. So we're currently looking to see if we can find some really good online scheduling software. So uh, as you all know before, we had hired the staff this summer. To, that's basically all they did was, was the scheduling. You call in, here's the time, here's some scheduling. Are going to have a family member with me or not going to have a family member with me? But if we could do all that online, it would certainly make it a lot easier for our users. And as well as like if we were looking at possibly getting to Tanisha to do it again, it wouldn't take up much of her time so she can have more free time to do her programming. So we're in the process of trying to find if we can get some real good online scheduling for our users. <clears throat> so once we find that, we'll bring that back for everyone to, to review. Leading up to all that, <clears throat> my last thing is the pool. Yeah, that was a long ways to get to the pool. but 
So before the meeting started, I handed out a four-page report from Trace Planning and Design. Uh, last Friday? Wednesday? Friday. Last week, <laughs> last week we had uh, Jim, Jim Scott from uh, Trace Planning and Design come to the islands and uh, uh, Noah and Deputy Mayor Fitzsimmons took him up to the pool to have a good walk around and, and take some pictures to get an idea of what he was looking at and then uh, after that he came back here to the office and uh, myself and Councillor Boyd had a chance to sit down and talk with him. <clears throat> so as a result of that, uh, he has basically broke down kind of their idea of, of moving forward to come up with some type of a proposal to come in and give the pool a really good look over. I mean, it's one thing for him to walk up there and say, yeah, the, the, the deck is completely gone. You know, the pool walls look okay, but we need to bring a structural engineer in here with an ultrasound machine to be able to say, those walls are, are sturdy, they're stable, they can withstand being repaired. Or they may come back and say, you know what, uh, the back wall of the swimming pool is completely gone, we need, to, we need to replace it. So in talking with him, there was a bunch of different ideas that we kind of threw out back and forth, just as we were sitting here kind of talking off the record. And <clears throat> one of the things that come up was, the first thing he said was, your pool's too big. Well, the provincial standard for pools is 25 meters. Uh, a few years ago, when we had the, the swim team here locally in the summertime, we had a huge number of kids that participated in that. Well, they couldn't hold any local meets because the pool was too big. Ours is 32, and like I said, provincial standards is 25. <clears throat> so the first thing Jim said was, you got to make that pool smaller. you got to get to the 25 meters. And by doing so, it's going to give you a lot more area in the end towards where the lifeguard building and the canteen is, kind of where that baby pool is, to do stuff. <clears throat> so talking back and forth, and uh, he's friends with uh, the gentleman from ABC Recreation that gave the proposal for the splash pad. He said, what if you did this? What if you amalgamated the two? Instead of having one way over in the field, what if you amalgamated the two and had them all in the pool area. <clears throat> well, that was a bit of a discussion that we had a while back with the uh, the splash pad committee. And one of the concerns that they had was having access to the splash pad. Most splash pads, like if you go to Moncton or Fredericton anywhere, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, the, the timer goes off, the, the geysers start, and you can play there all day until the timer shuts it off. Unfortunately, with a pool, you have to have lifeguards. So with our lifeguards, you know, our operating day was from 12 o'clock to six o'clock. So they were worried about having access to the splash pad part. But uh, as some of us talked the other day, I think there's ways around that with either fencing, maybe bringing one lifeguard in just to supervise, or different options. So in here, one of the things that he was going to look at, he's going to give us different proposals. <clears throat> one that may be able to uh, just repair the pool that's there. One would be to completely start from scratch. You know, do we want a five-year Band-Aid? Do we want a 25-year fix? Do we want a brand new bank a new pool? Do we want to include the splash pad on one end? So this is all kind of broke down in the uh, in the proposal. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, they're looking at about uh, $11,600 to do the study. And that last page, it spells it all out on how much time they think it's going to take for each individual person, from the engineers to the aquatics to the marketing, the modeling, to come up with what they feel will be our best three or four options moving forward. So <clears throat> we do have the money that was put in the pool budget uh, last year, which was initially put in there in case the pool was completely uh, condemned. We'd have that money in there to, uh, to excavate it, to, to level it all off and bury it, uh, which it did not happen. So that money is still there. So. That is an option for well. Like Councillor Boyd said when we first started talking to Jim, the, the best thing that we heard was he didn't come in and say, you got to level that thing. I mean, he was surprised for a 53, four-year-old pool. I mean, even though the, the, the deck surrounding it is, is gone, the actual bones of the pool, the pool structure itself, wasn't that bad. So 
it was very it was very promising to, to, to talk to him for sure so I spoke to Jim today he would like as early as next week if this is something that council decides to go with to get his structural engineer down to start the study by looking at the walls saying that that's the end of my very lengthy report any Thank questions Thanks, Chris. Any questions? Councilor Russell. Uh, where we have the money and budget, is it, do we need a motion to get, to approve this uh, company and the funds to proceed? What's our next, how do we make this happen? I don't think it would be out of order to have a motion to proceed. I would like to make a motion that we engage trace planning and design to do the study as identified with respect to Grand Harbor Pool. You heard the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. Oh. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> Councillor Brown seconded. I'm not going to get into that fight again. <laughs> Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Any other questions? Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Finance and Property Committee report. Councillor Russell, are you going to be as fast as you were on the last one? Just slightly over streetlights, but not much. Just a quick update. Uh, you haven't heard from us for a while. Uh, the last two council meetings, we deferred our typical uh, meeting time to uh, more important matters. So we did meet last week in the property area. Uh, things we talked about last week are the uh, request for village takeover cemeteries, the dark arbor lease, and the parking around this facility. So those are all active. Uh, the asset management report that uh, Crandall did uh, is typical. It's an ongoing document. It's required under local governments, and it needs to, uh, annual updating. So we're trying to decide now, is that something we can do locally, say the CEO's office, or do we need a third party? So that's being investigated, how we keep that updated. Uh, as you know, we, uh, in an earlier council, it was approved to discuss, to meet with our bank, our investment uh, people, our benefit people, and our insurance people. Uh, all those four meetings have taken place. Uh, Rob and I, without permission from anybody, had a preliminary meeting with our insurance policy people to just uh, in, to go over things. Uh, it was very productive. Uh, there's quite a few questions outstanding that they're going to get back to us uh, when we get the proposal for the new policy. Uh, it'll be, you know, at this table for sure, which should be soon. Uh, one thing they're, they're giving us a price right now. We have a five million dollar liability That's likely on the low end. So we're going to get some quotes only on uh, going to say 10 million 15 million Which uh, likely is closer to where we should be uh, Just uh, just for example one of the things under the AD and D which is accidental death and dismemberment uh, Right now they have a clause if it's over 100 kilometers to go to a specialist, uh, they will pay all travel and accommodations. Well, for us to go from here to St. John, it's less than 100. So we've put in a request that because we're an island, we're special, we want that dropped to 50 kilometers so that if anyone had to go, then all that would be covered. So that's just some of the stuff that we looked at. Uh, plus, there's just some wording things, was there quite a bit. Anyway, it's a very productive meeting. Uh, We've met with Scotiabank. There's some changes there to be looked at, some more electronic banking, uh, some more electronic type reporting to save some money. Uh, the meeting with Assumption Life, many of you are there. Uh, the only thing there was the definition of who qualified under A and D and D. The definition for mayor and councillors was not appropriate. And that's, they just thought that was a misprint. And with Scotia McLeod, our investment people, uh, the recommendation was to have a policy and an oversight committee. Uh, we, do have, uh, they d we do have a copy of a proposed policy. It's been circulated to the finance and properties team for feedback. 
uh, once we get that, we will massage that as uh, finance and properties, and then it will come to the table for formal approval, and then off we go and do investments. Uh, just uh, one other quickie on uh, the area. I guess this comes under recreation and parks. We're looking at a couple of user fees that need to be fine-tuned, and that's the pickleball group. Uh, most pickleball players have paid. Some have not. And we're also looking at adult softball should be looking at some user fees. So those are some of the things that are active with finance and properties. Thank you. Thank you, Council Russell. Do we have any questions? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to item 17, which is approval to pay the following invoices from the General Operating Fund. Dillon Consulting for $5,750. Another Dillon Consulting for $8,050. Both of those are for the Rural Plan Updates. Island Home Hardware for $3,661.28. That's the November statement. And Charlotte County Refrigeration for Arena Maintenance, $3,629.91. And I'm assuming that's the problems we had with the ice thing back in the fall? It was. They had had to make three visits, and the last visit required them to put in a fair amount of uh, refrigerant gas that had leaked out so okay um i'm just having a with the rural plan for uh dylan consulting i'm just wondering if we should have a draft or something before we pay them any money they promised us a draft and we haven't seen anything yet They had given us an update. It's always coming, it's coming. So and I think from the start, the first time that we folks spoke to have it is come and gone. Mm -hmm. And each time we ask the question, it's being prepared, should be on the council table, you know, within the next week or so. We haven't seen anything other than that. So you could. So I'd like to. I was wondering if I could make a motion that we wait till we get our first draft before we pay any of these bills. The two from Dillon Consulting. Yes. Okay. Just <laughs> sorry. You heard the motion by Councillor Brown. Second. I second. Second by Councillor Turner. Question. Yes, I don't think we. Uh, Dillon was quite active here early. We had a meeting, and it sounded very positive, but. For two or three months, there's been very little communication here and there. Uh, I don't think we should be paying this kind of money until we have something in our hands, which is basically in support of the motion. Uh, I'm not saying it's not valid, but we need something, either something more concrete than just an invoice for, for what we have in front of us. Thank you. Any other question? Considering we were just told about paying things in advance <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good decision <laughs> all right all those in favor of the motion Aye. contrary minded motion carried so I would still be looking for a motion to pay the other two invoices Moved by Councillor Greenlaw. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Boyd. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Item 18 is closed session. We held our closed session meeting prior to our council meeting, and 18.1 is personnel CAO. <laughs> Pushed it. My lights on. Your lights on. Well, okay. Uh, yes, we did have a uh, committee of the whole uh, meeting here a bit earlier, and 
this, in relation to the CAO position, it is the recommendation of the Personnel Committee, and I move that we authorize the Personnel Committee to take the necessary steps to address the CAO's early retirement. You heard the motion by Councillor Green. Do we have a seconder? No seconder. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Fitzsimmons. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Okay, we're going to go now, it's, if you pencil this in between 18.1 and 18.2, we'll call it 18.1.1. Uh, I move, it is a recommendation of the committee and I move that we appoint Chris Rayner as acting CAO effective on the date of uh, Rob's retirement. You heard the motion. For terms, you all oh, right, I forgot the term for the term uh, from that date until our March meeting. Heard the motion by Councillor Green. Do we have a second or seconded by Councillor Boyd? Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Aye. Motion carried. Um, before we move on to 18.2, I do just want to say thank you to Rob for all of his years of service to the community. It certainly has not gone unnoticed or unappreciated by I know anybody around this table and around previous tables as well so 18-2 personnel staff salaries okay staff salaries um, due to the rising cost of living and the quality of work and dedication to the jobs it is a recommendation of the personnel committee to award a five percent raise to all employees you heard the motion by Councillor Green do we have a seconder Seconded by Councillor Toll. Question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. One more, Councillor Green. Hey, starting to feel like Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, not really. It's a uh, historic here, traditional at Christmas. We give our staff uh, a Christmas bonus. And uh, we have three levels of bonuses, one at $100, one at $200, and one at $500. Um, I move that we give, uh, give these bonuses out. Do you want me to read I, them? I don't think we need the details. I think as long as we have the numbers. Yep. You heard the motion by Councillor Green. Do we have a seconder? Second by Councillor Russell. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. So that brings us to the end of the agenda. Our next regular meeting will be on January 10th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. And we'll see where we are COVID-wise and protocol-wise by the time we get there, how we do it. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn before I say something inappropriate like I did at the last Zoom meeting. <laughs> Make a motion to adjourn. Motion adjourned. Thank you.